And in the video that I'm going to show you, Dr. Tornado is talking about the, uh, the, his reaction to the leadership changes in the National Democratic Congress. Tornado is instructive, and many people were sending this video to me because just a few weeks ago I had discussed Tornado's um, expressions on Joy FM's um, front page program, which invariably or inevitably uh, prevented the late General Joshua Hamidu from becoming a running mate to President Kofu in the year 2000. And so people sent it to me and said, Tony Edu is, is saying something else, and have a look at it. So this is Dr. Tony Edu speaking in Chrissy Pratt's uh, TV studio. This is Pan-African TV. Uh, he was there. He was talking about the NDC issue. Hear him. This is Tony Edu speaking. The NDC has taken over from the MPP as the topic of discussion. Why should it be? And we forgot that there is a bigger picture beyond your internal struggles for authority or power. I was very much concerned when I heard Joseph Yami say that between the national executive of the party and the parliamentary caucus who is powerful. This has nothing to do with internal power competition. And it's a very careless statement to make. As if you are pitching sections of the MPP, NDC, with NDC. Why is it necessary? Where does the competition for power within the NDC arise? Why should it even be an issue? At a time when within the NDC itself, the parliamentary caucus must have unity. When the party is in opposition, your frontline fighters are the members of parliament. That's where the fight is. And your capacity, capability of waging the fight against your opponents rests on your on the unity that exists among the parliamentary caucus. Why go and divide it? Why? Is it because you want to show who is in charge? This issue of new king, new law. New king, new law to what purpose? A powerful king is one who is uh, magnanimous. A powerful king is one who is humility itself. People wonder, why did Rawlings last 19 years? Because the man was a very humble man. People don't seem to understand. Why, what, what, what was the source of Rawlings' charisma? The way he related to common people. That was the source of his charisma. Not because he was Chairman Rawlings and lord it over everybody. But because he was also consulting. He used to call it the spirit of humanity. The spirit of humanity. Compassion towards other people. You are in a position you don't lord it over other people. Because how you treat other people is your source of power. The way you relate. You are not powerful when you become a dictator. You are not powerful when you are feared. You are powerful when you are respected. When you are revered. That is a source of power that you want. Now, as I started, the fat is in the fire already. And we have a fate complete. I don't think the national leadership in this particular case the general secretary and the chairman and from what Yamin is saying he was part of the uh, drum parade <laughs> 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 
who took that decision will go back. What is important is how we mend fences. Those who feel hurt because they were not consulted or because they were changed without notification. I would say we, we, we need to let sleeping dogs lie. Because squabbling among ourselves isn't going to pay us any good dividend. But the mass misshapy behavior orientation of the NDC must stop. You don't have to trend all the time. We trended soon after the Ayawasu West Wogon incident. Then, at the Ashanti Regional Office of the party in Kumasi, people had to go and fire guns. Trending. Why? Is it because the party is seen as a vehicle that is convenient for people to jump on for their own individual objectives? You may ask, and I have to ask this question, how many people who support the NDC are conversant with the ideology of the party? How many? Even among the leadership. Are they ideologically conscious what the party stands for? What the party aims to give to Ghana? These things must stop. These things, he says, must stop. And I, I like what he says about the ideology because we are looking for political parties who have a clear understanding of the ideology they want to pursue. And then they can share that with Ghanaians. And Ghanaians must, can make a choice out of um, a program, a program of political party A and a program of political party B. Part of the fight that we have been carrying out is that let political parties get away from the fringe argument and make a concise argument that we as a political party, this is how we understand the way in which we have to run this Ghana. For us, our economy will look blue, red, green, white for us. And then when issues come about debt exchange program, we would like to hear from the competing parties that MPP says they're going to do a debt exchange program. We think that we should go this way or we agree with them, but we think they should tweak this or tweak that. That's how modern societies develop. You always have the fringe elements who do this and that's election time. You always have them. They are part of it. It makes it work. But it shouldn't be the centrifugal agenda of a political party that they are always staying on fringe issues and they are picking up fringe issues and they are not offering anything. And I, I like Tony when he says that do the people who lead the NDC actually know the philosophy. I told you the story one time I did an editorial here. One of the youth leaders of the party asked me whether Alhaji Baba Kamara had ever been a national executive of the party because I said so. And he was in a hurry to challenge me without understanding that yes they don't quite know their history and it's, it's damning that a lot of our young people don't know their history and they don't feel that it's part of what they have to do in terms of uh, doing the amanyosem as they say it the the political party work so what Tony Edu said is food for thought not just for NDC but also for NPP and all young people who want to be political <laughs>